Hello again, everybody. It's your old pal, Guardian Enzo, here again for the summer 2021 season preview of Companion Video. And coming to you live from the new location of LIA, LIA Towers, which is in fact in Kyoto now, which is exciting. Uh, left Kobe behind, although I'll still be visiting fairly often, I think. I like Kobe an awful lot, but relocated to Kyoto, which is very exciting. I lived here for a short time, as followers of the blog may know, a few years ago, about three months. And I had a, you know, I've always been in love with Kyoto. Uh, but now I'm living here. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, right in the shadow of uh, the market from Tamako Market and uh, right across from the Kamo River. So very exciting. In any event, summer 2021... Well, let's put it this way. This video will be a little shorter than the spring one. Um, spring looked like a big season going in, and it was. It turned out to be very good. Not top tier great like 2012 spring or 2007 spring, but the best season probably, I think, in terms of depth we've seen in, in a couple of years. So a very good season. There was a price to be paid for that, I suppose, in that summer. Summer, traditionally summer and winter are the smallest anime seasons, although you will get some surprising shows in summertime. Summer has has produced quite a few sleeper hits for me over the years. I don't see a lot of them on this schedule, to be honest. Uh, really was only able to preview 12 shows this time, which is a pretty low number. It's about one third of the total on the schedule because summer schedule is a little smaller than, than uh, spring or fall, as usual. But even so, 12, and that was that was with pretty generous, that was with pretty generous bar I used to 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 filter in what I was gonna actually preview. So it's you know, we have even a few shows that have already been canceled. Oh, not canceled, hopefully, but postponed due to the pandemic uh rearing its ugly head again and the state of emergency on and on again, off again. So there have been some more production delays. Whether we'll see everything that's on this preview actually air on time in spring or not, I don't know. Let's or in summer, I hope it will. No guarantees, uh, but there it is. Um, it, you know, hopefully fall will be better. There's some more stuff coming up later this year that that looks a little more exciting than what I'm seeing in the summer. But uh, to get right to it, as as you know. Probably my highest, uh, my my number one category for the season preview post is the highest expectations category, and uh, I don't have anything in it this time. Uh, I did not physically go back and check every one of my previews, but I can tell you it's been a good long while since I've had nothing in the highest expectations tier. Long enough that I'm having a hard time remembering that ever happening before. I'm sure it must have, but uh, I don't remember the last time it did. Uh, so really we have to jump straight to, uh, the mid table category and the number one series for me this season in, in the mid table category is sunny boy from Madhouse. And the fact that the, my number one show is an original series that has the full range of potential that all original series have, which is from terrible to masterpiece shows you that there's not a lot on the schedule that really, that really shows potential for me. I, Sunny Boy could be terrible, it could be mediocre, it could be pretty good, but it is also the only show I see on the schedule, for my taste, that looks like it at least has the potential to be really, really good or even great. And I have no idea if it will or not, but it, Madhouse has not done a ton of uh, lead production in the last few years, but uh, when they do, it can often look very, very good. The previews for Matt for Sunny Boy look excellent. It's got uh, Natsume Shingo, very, very well-known uh, anime director with one of the deepest Rolodexes in the business. So you can be sure a lot of really big name people will work on this show. Uh, doing double duty this time, he's doing the series composition as well as directing. Series composition, as you know, is what I consider to be the most important person on an original anime. So... Natsume has not done a ton of series composition in his in his career, his very sterling career. He's much better known as a director than as a writer. So we'll see. Uh, everything about this one, I mean, if you look at the previews, even if you look at the premise, which is 36 high school kids uh, adrift into another dimension, they suddenly have uh, weird psychic abilities. 
it has a very, very 90s, early 2000s feel to it. The look of the anime very much falls in that umbrella as well. 90s, early 2000s. Uh, the biggest name on the cast here other than, uh, or in the staff other than Natsume is Eguchi Hisashi, who's a very, very well-known uh, designer. He's done the character designs here, which he's very well known for doing um, Bishoujo, but he's, we got a mixed gender cast here. It is a very old school design look as far as the characters are concerned. Again, it, it harkens back to that 15, 20, 25 year ago anime vibe. Um, beyond that, I can't really say too much because of course we don't know. It's, it's an original anime it's not by uh, a creator who's known as a writer necessarily. So it could be great. It could be thoroughly mediocre at this point. We don't know. But uh, this does look like it has the potential to be something special. And it's the only show on the schedule we can say that about. So that's Sunny Boy. And next up for us, we have um, one I know much more about, which is uh, Shinigami Bochan Tokuro Maid. The reason, of course, being that uh, I read the manga, and the manga is by uh, Ikame Koharu. Um, it's, a, I believe, it started out as a web manga, but I first caught wind of it by seeing it as a uh, on on the shelf, just just grazing the shelves, looking for interesting covers, which I often do. And I really like this manga a lot. It's it's a very uh, European fairy tale kind of a vibe to it and look. It has a bit of a Kuroshitsuji vibe, especially just in terms of the setting, in terms of the atmosphere, in terms of the look of the series. It's not nearly as dark and violent as Kuroshitsuji, but it is in that same vein, very European fairy tale influenced. The story here is a young duke, about 17 or 18 years old, who was cursed when he was much younger so that anything he touches, flowers, animals, people, dies instantly. And uh, as a result of this, he was banished from the family estate and sent to the detached estate. And the only person who went with him was uh, a young maid named Alice and uh, also an old butler named Rob. And uh, it's a love story, as you can imagine. Uh, it has a lot of humor to it. Uh, there's a lot of the witchcraft stuff and there's a circus and it, it's just a really fun kind of a, uh, just a really fun kind of a sometimes dark, but usually more humorous uh, fairy tale. It is full CGI, which doesn't thrill me. It doesn't need to be full CGI. It's from JC staff and it's the same group that, that did the, that did high score girl, same director, uh, most of the same main staff. So they did a great job with High Score Girl. The difference being for me, High Score Girl was a show that you could reasonably make a case should have been in CGI, or at least there was an argument for it because of the themes, because of the content. With uh, with Shinigami Bochan, I don't really see that. Uh, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater here just because it is CGI. Uh, JC staff proved with high score girl that they can do a good job with that. So I'm going to choose to be optimistic. I don't put this in my highest expectations category, not because of the CGI, but because having read uh, the manga pretty much up to date, I know it's not a masterpiece. It's just really, really fun and charming. It's not great, but it's very, very good. It's hard not to love. I don't see Masterpiece anywhere near this thing. It's just not that sort of a manga, but it, it, it should be the safest bet of the season for me. And, you know, there's nothing content wise. We know from the job they did with high score girl that they're not going to dramatically change things around too much. One wouldn't imagine. Um, so that's my, if sunny boy is my wild card, Shinigami Bochan is my safe bet for the season. So, uh, you know, that one, if I was betting money on it, I'd say we'll probably end up being better than Sunny Boy, but there's a good chance of that. But I think there's a chance Sunny Boy could could surpass it. We just don't know. The range of outcomes with that one is so much wider. Next up is uh, Vanitas no Cart or Carte. I don't know how you pronounce it. And it's a vampire manga adaptation. It's a good season for vampires this time around with Mars Red. Uh, this one is by Mochizuki Jun, who, of course, is the author of uh, Pandora Hearts, 
which is her most popular manga, massively popular manga. And it's interesting to me that they've chosen to adapt Vanitas when Pandora Hearts has never been completed in anime form. I'm not sure why they would do that. Uh, but I, while I haven't read much of Vanitas no Carte, I, I've heard good things about it. And even though it doesn't have a elite bone staff, it is a bones anime. And anytime bones is involved as the main production studio, I feel pretty confident that there's a base level that you're not going to go below. The production values are going to be good and they're probably not going to mangle the, uh, they're probably not going to mangle the content. Uh, the director here is uh, Itamura Tomoyuki, who's, again, it's not an A-list Bones director, I would say, but Bones has a way of, of Bones has a way of making good directors out of mediocre directors, just with the support system that they have. Not to say that Itamura is a mediocre director, although he has worked on a lot of, uh, as he has worked on a lot of stuff for Shaft, but we'll leave that alone. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a good staff, uh, not a, not a great staff, but the fact that it's bones, it probably makes the biggest difference. Um, there's this basic story. It's a vampire story about an, an old vampire named Vanitas, uh, who is very powerful and not especially well loved by other vampires. And he creates this cursed grimoire, which is, uh, which is supposedly the key to his future vengeance against all the eight vampires who hated him. And uh, the main setting here is in Paris in the 19th century, which could potentially, I think, be a very interesting, very interesting. The last anime I remember with that setting uh, was was one of my favorites of all time. So, um, you know, I, I, you, anyone who follows the site knows which, knows which story that is. So um, I, I feel good about this. Uh, I, I'm not having read the manga. I can't say, you know, it's, it's going to be great, but... The, the manga seems to be generally pretty well regarded, um, I would say. And the other thing that's encouraging about this is that it's a split core. So we know we're getting at least two cores out of it. The manga is ongoing. So there's no reason to think that it's going to end soon enough for the anime to potentially finish it. But at least they're not going to have to try to cram as much as they can into one core. So uh, that is uh, Vanitas no Cart or Carte, if you like. Last in this category is the second season of the new Higurashi anime, which is this time called uh, Higurashi no Nakukoro ni Sotsu. And this is kind of an eye bid from the preview worth the first season for winter. Um, I like the first season. A lot of hardcore Higurashi fans, which I'm not, although I have seen every incarnation in anime form, seem to sour on it. There were times in the middle of that run where I was close to souring on it, especially when it was getting seriously into the whole torture porn thing. Uh, but at the end, I think it got quite interesting. And this whole issue with, um, you know, with Setsuko being the big bad and, and there's a lot of psychological aspects of it that are really kicking in. I, you know, I, I'm always interested with Higurashi. I, I almost always find it quite entertaining uh, it's taking the story into some slightly different places that I haven't seen it go before. So, you know, like I said, be optimistic. Maybe this will be maybe this will be better than the first core. I'm at least very curious to see where it's going to go. Uh, so, you know, there you go. That's Higurashi. Next is the modestly interested category. Yes, we had nothing in highest expectations and only four series in uh, mid table. And once we get to the modestly interested, I'm going to kind of breeze through these pretty quickly. Uh, frankly, there's some shows in this category that I'm not even that sure I should have covered at all. Uh, maybe my least, my least not on my least uninterested series in the modestly interested category is remain from Mappa, which is an original uh, by the author of uh, tiger and bunny Nishida Masafumi. And it's a sports series about water polo. And it looks quite good. I, I'm not necessarily thrilled with Map at this point, as they're basically a black company. But the you know the previews look pretty good. Uh, I've never seen a sports anime about water polo, so I'm curious to see where that goes. I don't have a particular interest in the sport. I don't know that much about it, except I know that 
It's legendary for dirty play and all kinds of shenanigans going on below the waterline. And most of the people who play it at a high level are really seriously mean and badass people from what I've heard. So anyway, I kind of doubt we're going to get that with the Tiger and Bunny writer behind it, but who knows? Uh, yeah, new sports anime. I'm always keen for those. Peach Boy Riverside. Uh, this is by the author of Kobayashi San Chino Maid Maid Dragon, which is not one of my absolute favorite anime, but I think is intermittently entertaining. Uh, might be an interesting fantasy series. Uh, a girlish looking boy and a bored princess and a magical ability called Peach Eye. Uh, I'm sure there's some kingdom saving going on here somewhere. Uh, might be interesting. Um, Ore Tsushima is another one I would call out because, uh, well, it's got cats in it. And I've never heard of this manga. I've never seen a review of this manga in English. But it's a story of an old lady who is usually mistaken for a man. And uh, her cats, who can talk to her and call her Oji-san. And I don't know how that's going to be communicated in the narrative, but I'm assuming the cats are going to be talking because one of them is played by Otsuka Akio, which alone would probably make me enough to, you know, that would be enough to get me to check it out. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I'll be interested to see where that goes. It'll probably be stop motion or, or CGI or something bizarre, probably not real animation, but you know, who knows? I'll, I'll, we'll check with that and maybe it might be interesting. Uh, we have the new uh, PA work series called uh, Shiroi Suna no Aquatope. I always check out PA work, PA work series, even though I feel like they're they're being stamped out of a mold at this point. They, I feel like most PA work shows these days seem to be kind of a computer generated model of what a PA work show is supposed to look like. Uh, but it's PA works. Who knows? It'll it'll probably look good at least. Uh, the problem has been with the writing with PA works in the last few years. Anytime they do an original. Uh, which is generally what they do. Uh, adaptations like Ujidin Kazoku, which has been by far their best work for the last decade, are the exception for them. They almost never do manga adaptations, and they rarely do adaptations of any kind, uh, which is, that's something they've consistently done in, in their whole existence, which I think is great. It sets them apart. I just wish they weren't so generic and so repetitive in recent years, but we'll check it out. And that's really, there's other shows in that category, but there's really nothing that stands out to me as being especially interesting or a sleeper. So let's move on to the OVA category, which is two this time, which is better than one last time. Uh, we have the new Tonikaku Kawaii OVA, which is coming out in August. And uh, that one is a Sukasa focused story, uh, learning how to use a smartphone. Uh, there was a false report of a second season being greenlit on the day the first season ended, which was a real, that was a real gut punch when that turned out to be a, a fake. Uh, hopefully we do get a second season of this at some point, because I really find it quite a, quite a charming and lovable love story. And we don't get too many good love stories about married couples in anime. So I would really like to see a second season of that for now, content ourselves with an OVA. And then a very interesting OVA in the Mahotsukai no Yome family called Nishi no Shonen Teto Seiran no Kishi. And this is an original in the sense that it's not from the manga, but it is being written by the mangaka. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what, this is the first time we've seen new Ma Mahotsukai anime for quite a while. It's going to be three episodes. The first one releases in September. As I said, Yamazaki Kore, the mangaka, is writing it. Wit, I assume, just because they're perpetually overstretched, they're, they're out, and a new studio called Kafka was formed specifically for this OVA series. And uh, it's uh, something to do with uh, a boy named Gabriel who's not a wizard but ends up in the world of wizards. And, uh, you know, it it's, sounds like a pretty classic Mahotsukai side story kind of a thing. But I had my ups and downs with Mahotsukai. I ended up actually pausing the manga and never going back to it, uh, which maybe wasn't the worst thing in the world, given how many long hiatuses it's had. But I do, at, the, at its best, the anime was really, really spectacular. And, you know, with wit behind it and an OVA budget, it's probably going to look really great. So... 
uh at the very least so i you know i'm gonna choose to be optimistic about this one again this is a three episode ova series first one uh first one comes out in september with a manga volume so you can figure it'll be with the manga volumes as the next two come out i believe it's finishing in early 2022 uh and then we move on to theatrical and where summer is usually a down season for tv anime it tends to be the biggest season with theatrical for obvious reasons Theatrical anime, although these are all presumably finished or nearly finished and in the can, uh, we always have the question of uh, the pandemic here, and that could be an even bigger factor with uh, with with these than the TV uh, anime because it's a question of will they be released or not uh, theatrically? We don't just don't know. In fact, the first one that I'm going to talk about is Cider no Yo ni Kotoba ga Waki Agaru, which was originally scheduled to be released in June. So I already previewed it. Um, so that one, you know, I, it looks interesting to me. Uh, and Sato Dai is writing it, which again, we don't have a lot of new projects from Sato Dai in recent years. And it's, it sounds like a, a bit of a departure for him. Then we have Bell, the new Hosoda Mamoru film, which is entitled Japanese Ryu to Sobas, Sobakasu no Hime. And um, anytime Hosoda comes out with a film, it's a big deal. He is one of the big names, along with Miyazaki and Shinkai. I would say there's there's Mamoru, uh, Hosoda Mamoru. Even though I would say, uh, since he broke up with his longtime screenwriting partner, Okudera Satoko, the two films he's made since then, The Boy and the Beast and Mirai, have not been the equal of his earlier theatrical releases, in my opinion. Um, the, the, you know, the Occam's razor suggests perhaps that he is not as great a screenwriter as he can be a director, but I don't know. I, I personally find to my taste that, uh, uh, Okudera is missed in the partnership, uh, but it is Hosoda. He is a massive talent. He's a very important director. He's amazingly regular, like clockwork about his production schedules He's dipping his toes into um, maybe a bit of the Summer Wars, uh, Summer Wars vein of his oeuvre here. It's the story of a young girl who goes to a, lives in the countryside in the Anaka, who ends up going into a massively popular online uh, virtual world with five billion, uh, five billion uh, customers, and she becomes a famous singer in this world. And there's, of course, it's a whole sort of film. There's going to be romance. There's going to be danger. There's going to be the world under threat and all kinds of things. So uh, it looks really interesting. It maybe looks a little bit self-derivative if I'm going to be hypercritical, but it does look really interesting. And it's Hosoda. Any Hosoda film is an event. Hopefully this is the one where he's, you know, he spreads his wings and he emerges from the shadow of his partnership with uh, Okudera and proves he can do it on his own. I really hope so because the anime is a much better place when Hosoda is creating masterpieces uh, like uh, Ame Toyuki and Summer Wars than when he's creating just merely very good films. Next up, the new Boku no Hero Academia movie, uh, World Heroes Mission. The headliner here is... Uh, Deku accused of being a mass murderer. And then we have clearly from the promo material, a lot of Deku, uh, Kachan and Todoroki working together as a trio. Um, the first Boku no Hero Academia movies, the first two movies I thought were quite good, quite solid, nothing rev revolutionary, nothing revelatory, but quite good. There, are, there always seems to be the scenario where they're not written by Horikoshi, but Horikoshi is involved in scenario setup. And what the other thing we've seen, especially with the second film, is that what happens in these movies, he considers it canon and he incorporates it into the canon storyline. So the movies are important in that sense uh, because they matter as far as where the series is going and where it's going to end. So, uh, you know, this one, it'll be a pretty big deal. There's no reason to think it won't be. It's, you know, it's, it's a Boku no Hero movie. It'll make a lot of money. Uh, it, it's been eclipsed a little bit by JJK and Kimetsu no Yaiba, but Boku no Hero Academia remains massively popular in Japan and more popular than those two series internationally. So it's still a very, very big deal. Uh, and I, frankly, if you ask me, if you put a gun to my head, it's a Boku no Hero Academia movie, a Hero Aka movie will probably be quite good. 
uh, nothing spectacular. That would be my expectation. But I'm always looking forward to it. And assuming pandemic situation has come down by then, knock wood, which I'll do so you can hear me. Uh, I'm very much hopeful that I'll be able to see that one in the theater. Last up is another movie that I've already previewed and has been delayed, and this time a full year, and that's uh, Shiko no O, uh, the uh, Uehashi Nahoko adaptation from Production IG, as always. And as you know, Moribito is, Seirei no Moribito is my favorite series anime of all time. So I'm definitely looking forward to anything by Uehashi being animated by Production IG. Um, he, uh, Kameyama Kenji did certainly improve on her novels with Moribito. Nevertheless, the novels themselves, the first two of which are translated into English, are very, very good. And uh, she's, a, you know, she's an anthropologist and she incorporates a lot of that into her stories. And uh, you have children and common people fighting against societal evils and environmental destruction uh, with deeply uh, Asian mythological themes, especially Korea, uh, xenophobia. It's always very interesting. Uh, it's Ando, Mas Ando Masashi is the director. He's, he's worked with Hina Miyazaki Hayao. He's worked with, uh, with uh, Hideaki Anno, Makoto Shinkai. Those kinds of directors work with people they want to work with. That tells you about his skills as an animator. Um, Miyagi Masayuki, who's an excellent Bones director, is co-directing. And then uh, Kishimoto Taku, who's one of the best writers in anime, is doing the scripts. No reason not to think Shika no O, oh, The Dear King, is going to be a very, very... No reason to think it won't be a very, very good film. I, I have full confidence in this probably being the best movie of the summer, although anytime Hal Soda is involved, you don't want to jump the gun on that. Uh, so in a light season for TV anime, and as always a light season these days, as always a light season for uh, OVA, it's nice to have a good theatrical schedule. And that, dear listeners and readers, is our season preview for summer 2021. Uh, as always, I thank you very sincerely for uh, reading on the site, and I thank you for uh, checking out the video, uh, the blah, blah, blah of it. You've heard a jillion times before. If you like, please subscribe. Please hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. And of course, I look forward to reading your comments, both here and at LIA. And as, of course, you may not be aware if you're a new, if you're a new viewer, uh, we have a poll every season at uh, Lost in Anime with uh, a preview poll, which series you're most looking forward to. I'd love it if you'd choose five series on that as well. And uh, we'll be interested. I'll be interested this season, particularly with no 10 poll series, really. It'll be interesting to see what wins that poll. Because I, I, usually I have a pretty good, I, pretty clear idea what I think is going to win. And I'm right about 80% of the time, 85%. This, this season, I have no friggin' clue. In any case, Thank you again. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for reading. Uh, I hope you have a great summer. I hope uh, you're staying safe and I hope the situation is improving in whatever part of the world where you are. And uh, I hope the next time that we talk in, uh, in season preview terms anyway, uh, I hope I've been vaccinated and Japan has turned the corner on this finally the way we've seen other places do. Uh, until then, uh, have a great summer. And as always, Stay frosty.